Bonjour, madame. What's going on? Oh, you have no clouds. You're not happy with the photo? Madame, may I help you? Okay, I want to show you something really cool. First of all, what you have in front of you is not good. You have sand with footsteps, it's not good. What you put in front of the camera is the most important aspect. So, come with me. I'm going to take your camera and I'm going to move it closer to the water. Is that okay? Right now, the sky is too bright. You need to wait for the sun to hit the horizon because then the sky is going to be more pastel and it's going to be nice. And you need to expose for the sky, meaning you want to get a dark photo. So, let me show you. So you see, I go very low because I like to have this very clean sand as a foreground. You see, the problem you have now is that there is too much light. And so we have a very fast exposure and it doesn't really look nice. The water looks very sharp. It's nicer when the sun is going to go down. I'm going to try to make like a bit of a long exposure. So I'm going to go to like 50 ISO to make the sensor not sensitive. And then like F20 or F22 to prevent the light from coming. So it's going to force me to go to be like a, right now I'm like at one fifth of a second. One fifth of a second is going to give me a little bit of long exposure. But we need to wait more because the sun needs to touch the horizon. A few moments later. Madame, you have a lot of sensor dust in your camera, a lot of sensor dust. And sometimes, you know, you can get like a nice leading line with the water uh, if you have a fast exposure. Right now, I'm at one eighth of a second, which is pretty fast. You see what I do is, now that the sun is coming down, I can really underexpose the photo. I have a speed which is of one fifth of a second at 50 ISO, and I'm positioning one sort of sky and two sort of water, because I found the water really nice. What we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for the blue hour. You will see the color will be even more crazy. It's gonna get very saturated. It's going to be amazing. You're gonna love it. So you see, the sun is behind the horizon now, but the colors is not nice yet. But be patient, because when the sun goes below the horizon, everything becomes blue, and you have a few minutes, you will see, we'll get long exposure and a beautiful gradient in the sky. Be patient. Okay, so here is my advice. I, uh, I put it at F22 to stop the light to come at 50 ISO, so that we have a, a 1.3 second exposure. Now it's your turn. Try to take some photo. The light is becoming beautiful because it's a blue hour. And try different framing. I'm sure you're gonna love it. Do you like this photo? Yeah. Okay, let's go to Lightroom and retouch it. Bonjour, so I am back in my office. Okay, I'm gonna stop with the French accent and go back to good old American accent. All right, guys, welcome to the show. So here we go. I have this photo here of, uh, this is so, my wife took this photo. If you look at the settings here, I wanna show you a few things. It's one eighth of a second, F22, 50 ISO. She didn't have a filter on. So that was the only way to get a long exposure was to be at f22. The problem with that is that if your sensor is dirty and her sensor was very dirty, it goes really fast at the beach, uh, you can see there's a lot of mess here. So one thing that I do when I you know, come back from the beach and I have all these dirt, I'm gonna show you a little hack here. And by the way, all I'm explaining, this whole workflow is gonna be covered in this book. You can get a printed version of this book for free if you pay shipping and handling. All the information is under this video. Anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this little tool here and it's the new tool, the content or fill tool. And I'm going to re erase as much that I can all the dust. And what you do is you, with the middle mouse, you can make that tool bigger or smaller. You just make it a little bit bigger than the spot and you go everywhere 
where there is a spot. And because F22, unfortunately, makes really every spot stand out, we have a lot of spots. But, you know, not a big deal. Uh, this tool should get rid of it. This one is a bit of a big spot here. I'm going to go like that. And, of course, I would spend more work, but i give you a little trick. So now I've erased all the spots. I'm just going to open a shadow, bring down the highlights, lower the blacks and the white, just to get a bit of contrast or add a bit of contrast. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the photos that I've selected to show you today and I'm going to synchronize basically, well, I can do either check none. I could just synchronize the basic exposure and the helium brush tool. And that way it's going to correct this. Now it's going to take a while because it's using content or it fail. It's going to take up to 40 seconds because it's going to have to apply this new way of erasing the spots on every photo. But this way I can show them to you without any spot. Okay, so this has all been synchronized. Now I can really appreciate the photo a little bit better with just a bit of contrast. Now, I don't like this photo. I mean, it, it's a good photo, but I don't like it because it was shot too early. And I want to show you how timing is everything for landscape. So this is when the sun is a little higher and boom, we go a bit later. The sun is almost touching the horizon. I kind of like it. I wish it would be more clouds. I wish she had an ND filter, my wife, but she did not. So I kind of like this one. She, you know, I zoomed in with her just to get the sun, you know, falling down. It's an okay photo, but it's not great. And check this, what happened. So the sun now goes behind the horizon and the light gets boring again. So we go from a good light to a boring light, okay? Then it starts getting really dark and she, her settings are wrong because she's like at 1.3 seconds F22. Of course, I can always, you know, boost the exposure, but it's too underexposed. So I told my wife, and this is when she started taking photos to like, you know, do longer exposure and boom, four seconds at F16. Look at this one. Now, this one is kind of really cool. And uh, on this one, I did a bit of retouching. Let me show you. I'm going to reset. I'm going to reset the photo. So I give you a little trick. If you hold on the alt key on the keyboard and you click on the reset, well, I'm going to reset it completely, right? But then all the work that I did on the dust, I don't want to lose that. So what I can do is I can take a photo where I did my dust thing, press command shift C, and I don't need that. All I need is the healing, right? I only needed the healing and then I take this photo and I press command V. And it's going to paste the healing from the first photo to this photo. Boom. But you see this one now had one more. I don't know where this came from. So I'm just going to erase this one. Uh, had another one there. You know, I like this. Now we are at 4 second F16 ISO 100. Still ISO 100. Stars are starting to appear. I kind of like that. Then it starts getting way, a lot more crazy. So this is the next one. This photo, I already erased all the spots here. Let me take that off. Now, now we're talking about. So sometimes what she, I told her to take a whole bunch of photos. And what I do is like sometimes I don't know which one to take. So I'm going to select all four, all five, uh, which are very similar. And I'm going to press N on my keyboard and shift tab to go into something called the survey mode. So which one is going to be? I think my favorite is this one. Why? Because the water was going away and we start seeing the reflection here I, I find it interesting because we get this really nice mirror so you see i already gave this one a two star so i'm going to work more on this one so let's go on this one i think this is going to be one of my favorite but you see how the lights i mean this is let me show you this is like uh, i can show you the raw file the raw file is very similar this is the raw file okay uh, all i did was i'm going to show you i'm going to reset the tone so all i did was take out the dust out i'm actually going to take some more because i don't know as it got you know darker and darker there was more and more dust coming in uh yeah she really needs to clean her sensor really bad but anyway so on this one i'm going to do the natural drama flower which is in this book which you can get for free if you just pay the shipping so i'm going to open the shadow bring down the highlights and then i'm going to do my black and white so you hold on the option very important and you do the black slider all the way until you get about one percent of uh darkness and then what you do is you do the same thing with the alt key and you go all the way there until you start seeing there. So what you see here in like yellow and red, it's pixel which are 100% black. I don't want that. So I'm going to back it down, back it down. Uh, if I hold on the, the option key again here, you see here, I forgot to tell you, but the little black points here are pixel which are 100% black. I don't mind having pixel which are 100% black, but I do mind having pixel which are 100% white because... If you print this photo, it's going to be like just paper. There will be no more information. It's going to print paper. So I can see there's a couple more dust. So on this one, I'm going to spend more time because 
This is my one of my winning photo. I might, you know, print this photo. I definitely will post it on social media. I think my wife really did something really well. Uh, okay, so sometimes it's not working. Like a, a dust doesn't go away. So what you need to do is make just a bigger thing and hope. Sometimes you have to go to Photoshop. You see on this one, I, I might have to go to Photoshop to get rid of it. Let's zoom in on this one. Let's make it shorter. You want to make it big, but you don't want it to touch the roof because if you touch the roof, uh, ah, it's not perfect. Sometimes what you can do is do a second one on the top of the of the old one to get rid of the spot. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to go to Photoshop to clean that up. Okay. Um, contrast, a little bit of contrast. Look at that. The photo is already looking amazing. On this one, I want to do really the rule of third. I think she messed up the rule of third a little bit, you know, but she's not an experienced photographer. I love my wife and I love to teach her photography. She loves it. So 16 by nine. I want literally like one third of sky, two third of the pier and the water. So something like that is good. Okay, so now that I've done the basic exposure, uh, that's when I go into profile. Uh, it's the second step of the natural drama, which is profile and color refinement and white balance. So before I do white balance on this one, I'm just going to take the landscape profile, the one provided by Sony. You just go to camera matching landscape profile and then I just play, I think the white balance is spot on. Like I love when I shoot and I did that for my wife to set the proper white balance, you see, so that I don't even have to touch it in Lightroom. But if you do have to touch it, you can adjust it. I just love that it goes from the blue to yellow, which is maybe add a bit of magenta, but that's about it. Okay, the next thing that I want to do on this one, I'm not going to add texture or clarity. It's very sharp already. Yeah, she didn't mess it up. It's very sharp. Uh, I'm even going to add like a minus clarity to give it like a bit of a glow. Um, and then usually on this step, on the natural drama formula, I adjust the use saturation luminance, but in this case, I'm really happy with the colors. Like, I don't think I can do better. So I'm going to jump that step and I'm going to st go step to number four of the natural drama, which, which I talk a lot in the book is the dodge and burn. So dodge and burn on this one, it's already very dodge and burn. Like we have a lot of highlights, you know, it's very dark here. It's, you know, it, it's kind of cool. The only thing I think I want to make brighter is this reflection. So I'm going to take a brush. I'm going to make sure my flow intensity is in the 80 and I'm just going to add a bit of exposure, like 0.5 or something. I'm just going to add a bit of exposure just to make this reflection pop even better, you know, and maybe I'm going to make the sunset a little bit better with another dodge and burn. So dodge means making things brighter and burn means making things darker. So I'm going to dodge the sunset. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a big gradient where the sunset is. I'm just going to make things a bit brighter and maybe add even more saturation. Not too much. You don't want to, you don't want any bending. Bending is you don't want bending. Bending is when you went too far, just a little bit more saturation, just to make it pop. It's a small thing. Okay. And, um, voila, I think I just want to make it brighter. I really like that. And when I have a retouching that I like, I'm just going to select the last four photos, synchronize, check all synchronize everything. Cause I don't think she changed much. And it's going to take a while because what takes the most time is erasing the dust. You know, I would go in Photoshop and erase that. But first I want to see what's the best photo before I spend time in Photoshop. Okay, boom. And uh, look at this one. This one is kind of cool. We still have this problem of this dust here. I'll show you how to get rid of it. I'm just wondering which one is the best. I think I like this one better. So I'm just keeping a two star here. Let's look at this one. So this one way too dark. So because I copied all my settings from one photo to the next. So what you do is you hold on the option key and you check your black point. This is way too strong. So I'm going to lower it and then check the white point. Okay. I can make this a lot wider before I burn things. Okay. And then you can boost the exposure. It's already pretty good. I think the photo is too magenta. So I'm going to back that down a little bit. And, uh, I don't like the gradient. I think the gradient, uh, no, there's no gradient. We have something weird here. Uh, guessing it's spot. Yeah. It's a spot that's not going away. It's always that spot here. So you know what, because the spot is in a different place here, it's going to be easy. I'm just going to make a big circle click and that should get rid of that. Yeah, that worked. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'm not crazy about this one. I kind of like it. I think it's too magenta, maybe add a bit of yellow. It's really hard. I tell you color refinement is really super hard to get something you really like. Uh, I think I'm going to add a bit of magenta, like something like that. But again, I'm not crazy. I think this one's going to be better. 
Yeah, this one is way better. It's a bit too bright. Look at this one. This one's amazing. And then we have the same issue here, you know, of this dust here. I can take this out. But I think my wife did an okay job. And you see, the, the main thing I want to teach you is waiting for the right light. You see how much late we had to go. There was no clouds, but look at that. Like, this is really a good photo for me. And this is really a good photo for me. And they were shot really late. So on this one, I'm just going to go to Photoshop and clean up the roof. So right-click Edit in Photoshop. A little bonus tip for you. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. And what I do is I make sure you just have the layer here. If you don't have it, you just go to Windows, Workspace, like Photography. That's kind of a cool workspace that has the layer. Or you can go to Windows, Workspace, Essential. Just Or if you don't see this window, just go to Window, Layers. If you don't have it, just go to Window, make sure Layers is on. And then I'm going to take that layer, I'm going to click on plus, and I'm going to take my zoom tool, I'm going to zoom in on the issue. You see there's an issue there, this dust doesn't go away. And on this one, I think I'm just going to take the stem tool, it's going to be really easy. Stem tool, big stem tool, I'm going to hold on the option key, click here, and you see the option key is going to say, okay, I want this pixel to be here. And all you have to do is really align it to the roof, and you click and you drag, and voila. Yeah, this needs about 10 more cleaning. I'm actually going to do it really fast. Yeah, I think that's good enough before and after. And voila. And then I think this one I really love. I can't wait. I can't believe my wife took this shot. Amazing. Anyways, I hope you learned something. I have an amazing video on 10 hacks in Lightroom. Watch this video. It's going to blow your mind. It's starting right now. It's really some of the best tricks I use in Lightroom starting now.